Well, hi, boys and girls. Mr. McLaughlin asked me to tell you all about innovation. While Merriam-Webster won't like it, much of the time, innovation actually means updating something that's already out there. And while this might take the form of creating a new product or a piece of technology, much of the time we're really talking about the process. Forbes magazine came up with a list of the best innovations in the past 40 years. The internet, that was number one. PCs and computers, mobile phones, email, DNA testing, microprocessors, fiber optics, laser equipment, open source software like Linux and Wikipedia, liquid crystal displays, GPS systems, microfinance, large scale wind turbines, and digital photography, just to name a few of them. So this is what innovation looks like. This year, you, Mr. McLaughlin, and sometimes me, will be exploring all the different facets of innovation. How do we innovate? What kinds of things can we come up with? And can we create? What things have other people come up with? What things might we see in the future? So this course is all about having some fun and learning some things. Mr. McLaughlin, take it away. Well, thank you, I am. I am really excited to be here with you, boys and girls. That was my friend, I am Anthony Innovator, and he is going to be with us throughout the series. Today, we are going to take a look at Zoom, and we are going to figure out how to use Zoom to communicate. That is our first innovation, figured. Our first innovation is something that we're using this year. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to join a Zoom conference. So I'm going to open up a browser. And we're going to go to the correct website. So we're going to go and go to our schools, click on upper elementary. The link should be there, should be on the upper elementary and the lower elementary. So we're going to click on canvas and I'm going to log into my course. You get to see behind the scenes a little bit here and you can see all of the classes I have. I'm going to dive into one of my specials classes and go into innovation. And in here I got my Zoom links, so I'm going to open up a Zoom link and join a Zoom meeting. And this is what it looks like. To our first Zoom meeting, I would like you to turn your screen into the speaker view. That's oh, the in the upper right it's I am. Hi, I am. Press speaker view. Oh. Then I would like you to turn on the chat window. That is the button at the bottom that has the little bubble sign on it. That is and right down here at chat. So your screen should look like mine with the yep. speaker in the center and some pictures of your classmates across the top. And this is how we're going to set up our screen. Also, make sure you have a nice, clear wall behind you or nothing distracting, at least. Or you can use your virtual Zoom background, which we can talk about in a little bit. The other kind of windows that you can have are adding the participants window, which is the button on the left of the chat. And if you choose to, you can put both of the buttons up. I'm going to join the chat and the participants. I would like you to have both up. If you have both up, you get the advantage of typing in and sending messages. You can also send me messages with icons like raising your hand, saying yes, saying no, 
going faster or going slower. That means you want me to change how I'm going. It's too much information. There's also a three dots with a more button. And one of the important ones that are in there is I need a break. So that looks like a coffee cup. So you can click on that whenever you think you need a break. So today we are going to focus on learning about how to do the Zoom in the right way. What are the things we should be doing and how we should be behaving in Zoom? Let's talk about our school Zoom expectations. Be respectful, be responsible, and be safe. Being respectful means to make your Zoom name your first and last name. Use school-appropriate language. Make sure you are in a quiet space. No TV or music in the background. Follow your Zoom leader's rules for muting. Stay muted when you're asked to. Do your best to be in a listening, learning position. Crisscross applesauce, sitting still. These are some good suggestions. Listen to others as they speak. Use your headphones if others are in your house and need quiet. Let's look now at what it means to be respectful. Be on time to check in and make sure your computer is connected and your audio and visual works a few minutes before the meeting. Close the other browser tabs on your computer. Be visible if using video. Be focused on the meeting and avoid distractions of other devices. And finally, let's talk about being safe. Position yourself so there is a wall behind you free of distractions. If possible, keep others out of your video. Siblings, dogs, cats, parents. Share your appropriate ideas and thoughts when asked. So now I'm going to turn this over to Mr. McLaughlin, and he's going to talk to you about some of the other innovative features that we can find in Zoom. See you shortly. Oh, thanks. Um, that was Ima, and like I said, Ima's going to be with us throughout our presentation. I am really, really happy that we could talk about Zoom today. And one of the things that you might notice is that Ima and I both had a virtual background. So what I'd like to look at today is how do you go ahead and create a virtual background? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and make it big so that way you can see exactly what I'm doing. So let me pause and get that going. So the first thing I wanted to talk about were the three buttons that we use the most at the bottom of the screen. The participants button, that shows everybody who's in the meeting. So if I click on that, that's gonna move everything over and I'm gonna be able to see exactly who is in the meeting. So if we look, I can see it's just me and myself and all my friends. And then if we look down here a little bit, we can see underneath me that there are options to raise a hand, check yes. If we wanna say yes, we understand something, check no, go faster, go slower. And then here's that more option. Let me show that to you. So when I click more, I have the option of doing a thumbs down or a thumbs up, I can clap, I can say I need a break, or I could say I need to step away from the screen. And that's respectful to step away from the screen if you have to do something. Uh, so leave your computer where it is and step away from the screen if you have to. 
The other two really, really important buttons are mute and unmute. This unmutes the screen so people can hear what you're saying. And then this starts and stops your video. So when you start and stop your video, uh, this will put up a picture of either your name or a picture of you if you've changed your profile picture. And I'll show you how to do that. But if you change your profile picture, you have to make sure it is school appropriate. It should be a picture of you or it should be just a simple picture that says your name or that says what class you're in. Nothing that is going to be school inappropriate. So we want to make sure that we're still showing that respect. So the, I want to show you a couple other things that we have here is there's these two little arrows next to the unmute button and the start video button. If we click on the up arrow next to the little unmute button, we can see that we get a listing of speakers and microphones. So if you have more than one microphone on your computer, which I certainly do, I have multiple microphones, and you, for some reason you can't get your microphone to work, you could pick one of the other microphones. Maybe something's not plugged in right. Maybe you're using the wrong microphone. So you want to make sure you select the right microphone. Same thing for speakers. If you have headphones that you're using or you're using the desktop speakers and the sound isn't coming out right, maybe you want it to come out of your headphones and it's not coming out of your headphones, this is where you want to select that. You want to choose uh, which speakers you want. So I got my desktop mic and I have my desktop speakers that are selected. So let's take a look at some other things. So back down here at video, when I click on the up hour for video, again, I get a list of cameras to choose from. Some of your computers have multiple cameras. They got a front facing camera, they got a back facing camera. I know my computer has several different cameras built into it. Then there's this other thing here called choose virtual background. Now I promised you that we would take a look at this. Actually, I am promised you that we would look at this. So I'm gonna click on this and let me move this menu so you can see it. So in this menu that appears, you have the virtual background and you have a couple choices here. First, you may or may not have this button that says I have a green screen. It depends upon your computer. Some computers will only work if there's a green screen. Some computers have a better running video camera and video card that allow you to choose the virtual background and have the computer, Zoom, do it for you automatically. Then you have your list of backgrounds. Some of them are built in. You notice I got my classroom here, so I could choose that as my virtual background and set that up. I could also click on this little plus sign here and add an image, or depending upon your computer, you might be able to add a video. So those are fun. You have to make sure that you're adding things that are school appropriate. So I'm gonna ask that you only add a static image. We don't need a whole bunch of videos in the background that are really distracting. So a static image would be great. And if you're up against a blank wall, then the virtual background should work really, really well. So let's take a look at the video settings, some things that you can do. So I click on video, that was the other option here. And again, I can choose what kind of camera I have. I can mirror my video, so that way it kind of flips things back and forth. So it's either left to right or right to left, if I wanna do that. I can touch up my appearance. I can make myself look better. And then there's some other options like displaying the participants' names, turning off my video when joining a meeting. Uh, you should always have your video on for us unless you have to step away for a reason and you're being respectful, but for the most part, you should always have your video on. Always show your video preview during the dialogue when joining a video meeting, so that means you can check your video. Hide non-video participants, so if somebody's up on the screen and the teacher wants you to be in gallery view where you can see all of the individual students, then you may want to hide people who are just showing their names so you can see more of your classmates. And then spotlight my video when I speak. Uh, leave this unchecked. Your instructor will spotlight and unspotlight people as needed. So let's talk about the share screen button. When I click share screen, oh, it says the host has disabled screen sharing. So that means only the instructor can do screen sharing. 
If the instructor wants me to share my screen, they'll tell me and I will click screen share. So let me make that possible. So I'm going to do it again. And this time I get the menu that allows me to do my screen share. Let's take a closer look. So I can choose from many different screens because I have multiple screens, but you're only going to have one to choose from. You may also have different apps that are running that you can choose from. So you could choose one of those apps that are running, but there's also the option to choose a whiteboard. So you might want to be writing something on a whiteboard that you're going to share or your teacher might share. So those are some of the kinds of things that you can do. There is an advanced tab that works for computer and when you're sharing a video or something, but most of us won't be sharing videos. But if you are sharing a video, maybe you did a project and you're going to share a video, you have to make sure you share the computer sound. There's a little checkbox there. So we would share the computer sound. Okay. Let's talk about the chat box. So down here is the chat box that you can type message into. So I'm going to type in hello. And I'm going to hit enter and that sends it, sends my chat message. I can, if it's enabled, in other words, if your instructor wants you to do this, we can send files and you can click on that and then you can browse for a file that you want to send. We can also choose sometimes to only send a message to our teacher. So right now, if I wanted to, I could send a message that only my teacher would be able to see. Hello, Mr. McLaughlin. So there's two options to send it to everyone. So everyone gets to see it or just to send it to your teacher. You won't be able to send private messages between each other. That's going to be turned off. So when your teacher has shared the screen and you are in gallery view, this is kind of sort of what it looks like. You notice you can't really see me very well. I'm teeny, teeny, tiny in this little box and you can't see me very much at all. We want you to be able to see your teacher. So we want to make sure that we are clicking on the speaker view. We want to make sure that whenever we're in a meeting, we click on speaker view so we can see our teacher because she or he is going to be the one presenting the lesson and they will spotlight their video and we'll be able to see them. Now, when teachers not sharing their screen, you'll probably be able to see your classmates across the top, like we could see in the Zoom conference with uh, I am and his friends. But when they're sharing the screen, you're only going to be able to see your teacher and the board that they're sharing. So this is what that looks like. So you can see now this is what the screen would look like when we are in speaker view and the screen is shared. You can see your instructor. You can see the chat. Uh, you might want to have the participants box turned on. So you would click on participants and you could see who's in the meeting and you could have access to all of those little symbols. So that is also um, the other setup that you want to have your participants and your chat. So you can send messages and you can use your hand signals. And then we want to be in the speaker view. So, so that is our little lesson here on zoom, which is really, really innovative and I think is really awesome. You're going to have a chance to be practicing this all week and for the rest of the marking period with your instructors, which will be really, really cool. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. You can always come back to this video and watch it again to learn more about some of the things that we did. I know there's a lot of content in here and it might be a little bit much, especially for some of you who are a little bit younger. Feel free to reach out to me, Mr. McLaughlin. I am your innovation teacher and you can always contact me through email or through Canvas and I would be happy to help and answer all of your questions. So that's all for now. I will see you next time.